Right, so my talk this evening is um, on the Briggs Porphyry Copper Deposit in South Central Queensland, just uh, west of Gladstone. Um, this, which Canterbury have had since um, early in 2017 when they acquired it off Rio Tinto. Um, the photograph on the left is, gives you a bit of an idea what the terrain's like. This is um, the rig we had drilling in there last year. I was about to say it was the properties west of the divide and it's typical open savannah, eucalypt forest, type, rolling hills type of thing, but it's actually east, of, just, just a tad east of the divide in the headwaters of the Calliope River, which trains, drains out in uh, Gladstone Harbour or thereabouts. Uh, press the down key. Oops. Worked a minute ago, Peter. There we go. Mouse key. Um, disclaimer and competent persons statement. Um, I'm not going to read all that out. Uh, I'll just say that um, and will suggest that um, uh, this present should be uh, this presentation should be read in con context of recent disclosures up to the share market. This PDF or PDF of this PowerPoint's actually be been released either to the ASX or posted onto the uh, Canterbury website or both today. So it's public in the public domain. Um, as far as a competent persons is concerned, any technical information in this report which relates to exploration results is uh, I'm responsible for. And any information in this report which relates to estimation of mineral resources is being prepared by Jeff Reed. So a bit of an outline of the talk. I'll, I'll just give a very quick um, background to Canterbury, what it's been up to. Um, have a look at the Briggs project location, uh, regional geology, tectonic setting, and then get stuck straight into the Briggs project, look at the exploration history. Um, it's porphyry systems, so things like uh, geochemical pathfinders uh, on a regional scale, stream sediment, and more, more local scale, soil geochemistry, I'll have a look at those. Um, and then more locally, the footprint of the porphyry system or systems in plural. Um, geology and alteration, look at the geophysics, basic geophysics, and um, a closer look at some of the soil geochemistry zonation we're seeing. Um, got some pictures of some rocks and some mineralization, which is always good. Um, and then towards the end, I'll look at um, the work that's been done by Can Canterbury since 27, early 2017, touch on an exploration model. We tell you what we think is happening there a slide on the Briggs resource and just finish up with a slide on what exploration opportunities there are in the area. So Canterbury was um, formed in 2012, 2013 um, and it listed on the Australian Stock Exchange in early 2019. Its focus is um, Copper gold, mainly porphyry copper gold in the um, Southwest Pacific. We've got um, half a dozen projects on that map there. So starting at the north uh, on the left hand side at the top, there's Bismarck project on uh, Manus Island, which is a Canterbury's got 40% of and Rio Tinto, our joint venture partner, have got 60% of. We're exploring for porphyry copper systems underneath a very large lithocap there. Uh, next one down is Wamham, which is about 20 kilometres northwest of the uh, Harmony Newcrest Wafi Golpu project. Um, we've just released, a, it's a porphyry copper system or porphyry copper gold system, I should say, or several. Um, um, we've just released a an inferred resource on that of just over 2 million ounces of gold. Um, south again, the Kuti Range project, um, porphyry copper gold molly systems we're looking at there and then Epi River just northwest of Port Moresby, that's a porphyry copper gold system as well. Over in Vanuatu on Santo we've got um, the Tafusi epithermal gold silver system. 
and the one I'll be talking about today is the Briggs Porphyry, which is in a um, it's part of the Bridge Briggs project area, which also includes the Mannersley Porphyry, which is about 10 k's to the west, uh, east. Sorry, yeah. So project location, this is um, aerial shot, obviously. Um, over on the right hand side, you'll see this. I think it's a city of Gladstone. Um, it's about 60,000 people living in the area. Um, we're about 50 kilometres westish of, of Gladstone. You can see Briggs highlighted there in yellow. It's made up of three sub blocks at EPM 19198. That's where the Briggs Porphyry resides. Um, I'll also point out, um, and so joining that to the east is, is our tenement as well, Fig Tree 27317, and then in the bottom right hand corner of that tenement is EPM, EPM 18504, which is, covers the Mannersley Porphyry. Um, for those that aren't familiar with Gladstone, um, it's 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 a city. I think it's a city anyway. It's quite a large. It's it's certainly a, a, a major industrial centre. It's um, uh, got a port and and a, a regular, regularly serviced airport as well. It's Queensland's largest multi commodity port. It's the world's fifth largest coal export port. And if you look closely, you'll actually see the coal terminals there. There are several now. Um, and it's Australia's fourth largest port. Uh, there's some major industries related to mining in the area. Um, there are two alumina refineries there and these orangey bits. One here is the Rio, to the west of town is the Rio Tinto. Well, Yarwin's the actual uh, uh, a refinery it converts weeper ore into alumina, the aluminium oxide. And there's another one down here, uh, Kamalco on the on the southeastern part of town. Um, and we, there's also a, a smelter, so this uh, converts the alumina into into aluminium. At the Boyne smelters in just east of town. Uh, cement Australia has a has the largest cement plant in, in Australia there, and they they mine limestone from just uh, this this mine just south of Mount Larkham here. Orica Australia operates a chloro alkali plant there, produces ammonium nitrate for the explosives industry, sodium cyanide for gold leaching and chlorine gas. There's a 1680 megawatt coal fired power station there. And um, there are several LNG plants on Curtis Island, which didn't actually, oh, perhaps they do, up here on Curtis Island anyway. Um, which started in about 2015 using coal seam gas from the Surratt and Bowen basins. Um, and the gas gets there along a 520 kilometer pipeline, which you can actually see the trace of passing through. And it goes across the water there. And there's, there's actually four pipelines, or quite well, about 100 meters apart along that uh, corridor. Um, as far as infrastructure, should uh, we find an, an economic deposit there? Um, we're just north of this this major corridor, the Dawson Highway, just to the south. Um, there's the highway. Um, there's the coal um, train line from the Collide and and, and just West Biloela area, Maori area comes through there. Uh, it's high, high voltage power lines. There's the gas goes through. Um, there's a big dam for water down uh, in the bottom right hand corner there. Um, so infrastructure wise, we couldn't be in a better spot. I'll also point out Mount Morgan up the top left. Um, it's it's part of the geology as far as we're concerned. Um, copper, gold and silver mining began there in 1882 and continued for just under 100 years and finished in 1981. Produced eight, nearly eight and a half million ounces of gold, uh, but over million ounces of silver and 387,000 tonnes of copper. 
Wealth from the Mount Morgan mine funded Persian oil exploration, establishing the Anglo-Persian Oil Company, which later became British Petroleum, or as everybody knows, BP nowadays. It's got quite a history. Uh, hopefully, hopefully you're as or more familiar than I am with the regional geology of Eastern Australia. The Australian map on the left hand side, um, lab, Rockhampton's labelled there, Gladstone is about uh, 100 kilometres to the south of Rockhampton. Um, we are within the New England origin, uh, shaded there in grey, which extends along the east coast of Australia from just south of Townsville to just north of Sydney and is bound on the west for almost its entire length by the Sydney Gunnard, so from the Sydney, Gunnedah and Bowen basins. It's upper Devonian to Triassic in age and formed during long-lived subduction that continues along the Tong Tonga Kermadec Trench today. On the right hand side there's a space-time diagram for, for Queensland out of the Geology of Queensland book. Um, so the host rocks for the Briggs and Mannersley deposits are these Capella group, Creek group down the bottom here, which are actually middle top at Devonian type age. Um, mineralization in the belt are generally related to these Permitriasic intrusives up the top here. Um, Permian is, if you can't quite see it, is that orangey colour, and Triassic is that purpley colour there. Interestingly, the Mount Morgan trondramite, or the mineralisation of Mount Morgan, which is associated with Mount Morgan trondramite, is dated as, as Upper Devonian right down here. We have a couple of uranium lead zircon dates um, for Briggs. We've got two dates, one at 225, which is correlates pretty well with its upper permatriasic age, and an, but also one at 350, which is down here, closer in age to the Mount Morgan thing, so that doesn't really answer the A question. Um, Mannersley is about five dates, and they're all, all sit up in here. We don't as yet have any date, Peter, for the, uh, that's Peter Pollard, for the mineralization. Um, we're on the lookout for suitable molybdenite for this purpose. So regional geology, so there's a scale bar there, 10 kilometres up the top left. Peter Christo, this point is, can you see this pointer? Or it, the pointer doesn't work? No, we can see it, Mike. Okay, okay. so up the top left here, you'll see the Mount Morgan. Uh, in red is the Mount Morgan trondramite. And the main feature of the geology of the area is this sort of northwest southeast trending, trending. Um, it's called the Grassmere anticline here. And what it does is expose. Well, it extends over about 50 kilometres or so. And what it does is it exposes the core of the um, uh, the core of the anticline exposes the the lowest parts of the Capella Creek Creek group that are mid Devonian. Um, that's the Mount Dick beds in purple there. Then they're overlain by the Mount Warner Volcanics, some of these are um, mine sequence rocks, I think it's the Mount, War Mount Warner Volcanics. Um, and then it's overlain in grey by the Raspberry Creek formation and then in yellow, which we're starting to get into the rocks down here at Briggs, the Ginger Creek members. Um, then it was all intruded by the Mount Morgan Trondramite. And then over the top of that was uh, overlain by Late Devonian Balaclava formation. And all of this is terminated at the southern end by um, the Galloway or Galway Plains Granadira, which is Permatriasic. Um, styles of mineralization in the area, there are a number of, well, there's the number of style, deposit styles there, a number of porphyry style systems in our area, is obviously Briggs and then Mannersley off to the southeast, about 10 k's. Uh, Moomera, this it's quite a number. And then we've got these, there's a, a, a suite of things that are uh, basically VMS type things and I th that most people seem to think that Mount Morgan is, a, is an example of that. Uh, 
I'll just go back one for a minute. No, no, I won't. I'll keep going. Um, can you, can I? Okay, I just wanted to get rid of that little menu without changing the slide. Um, so this is an enlargement of the three tenements that comprise the Briggs, uh, three sub blocks that comprise the Briggs tenement. Uh, the northern boundary of the tenement is this dashed line at the top and the southern boundary is the dashed line at the bottom. So we're sort of in the central block of that three block tenement. What I'm showing on there is also is the, um, the old extinguished now long gone Newmont leases just to, um, it's part of the history, which I'll uh, get onto shortly. Um, the map in behind is, I like old maps. This is actually Geo Pico's map from, compilation map from 1982, I think it is, or 84. Um, it shows uh, right in the center there, it shows the, um, the central porphyry at Briggs. That sort of gray stipple thing I'm just identifying there. There's another porphyry system just to the northwest up here. It's, we call it the Northern Porphyry. It's also called the Rivers Head, Rivers Head Porphyry. And then there's another one down here to the southeast, which we call the Southern Porphyry. So Naranda discovered the uh, Briggs Porphyry in, in, in the late 60s. Um, and, and, and held the area under those two mining leases two leases. Um, about the same time, uh, Geo Pico, who were based out of um, Mount Morgan, as part of their regional survey, covered the area around the mining leases and discovered the, um, the Rivers Head Porphyry up, the, up to the north here. Um, both uh, Naranda and Geo Pico, so Naranda drilled about nine or 10 holes or so, those are the orange ones, or mainly around the central porphyry, all quite shallow came up with a small super gene resource. Um, most of the holes were less than 100 meters deep. Uh, uh, Pico had a, did a couple of deep holes up here on the northern porphyry and a couple of shallow holes through the alluvials on the west here. Um, CRA picked up the ground in the 1990s. Um, did some mapping, uh, a part of a, a much larger tenement that extended to the east and to the north lots of geochemical sampling and mapping, um, extended the southeast or southern porphyry to the east and drilled seven R RC holes, which are the, the yellow dots on there, chasing the southern porphyry and, and some mag targets up in here, which I'll have a look at shortly. And then um, Rio Tinto picked the ground up in 2012. They liked the concept that or developed a concept that a lot of the alteration and mineralization that was sitting at on the basically the eastern lobe of the central porphyry looked to be sourced from some uh, intrusive at depth that wasn't ex well, doesn't appear to be exposed, and that, that a lot of the rocks on surface were just hosts to the mineralization. Um, and I'll touch on that a little bit later on. They drilled uh, one deep hole down here, the screen one, chasing a, a, a molly soil anomaly and an IP anomaly down here. Uh, and then Canterbury acquired the project from Rio Tinto in uh, 2017. So geochemical pathfinders, I'll just have a look at copper, gold and molly. Um, this is the Southeast Queensland government data package. Obviously, GeoPico and Naranda didn't have this data set back in the in the 60s. Um, but you can now see that this is Briggs. These are the three uh, sub blocks that comprise the Briggs tenement. And this is Briggs and Hit. Lights up quite nicely with stream sediment of up above 200 ppm. You know, a kilometre square, basically. And this is Manasley down here. You could argue there's a, well, there are, there are a couple of anomalies there. Um, top right, I think it's gold. Yes, stream sediment gold. Uh, Briggs is, it doesn't have any gold associated with it, whereas Manasley does to the southeast here. And it, it's also anomalous, anomalous in Molly in the streams. 
uh, soil sampling. So a uh, compilation of all that, this is a, once again, the Southeast Queensland, Queensland data package. Um, Briggs here lights up quite nicely with soils. We'll get onto that a bit more shortly. Manusley is also quite a big soil geochemical anomaly. Mount Cedric up here to the north. And this strange thing over here on the other side, this is the other side of the catchment, um, the Great Divide, I should say, um, is the upper Don. And this is a VMS system. And you can see in the, t the other two diagrams I've got there, it lights up as a, a zinc anomaly, which is the top right-hand corner map. Um, and then the bottom right-hand side is soil molly, which just shows you that molly's quite anomalous in this um, the, these porphyry systems. So now looking at more detail at the, the footprint of Briggs system. Once again, this is the Briggs tenement. Uh, that's the northern boundary there. This is the southern boundary down here. And once again, you can see in the background the grey stippled central porphyry, uh, the southern porphyry and the river said northern porphyry up here. So um, in the alteration, um, we seem to have a central or at least a core of a system here, uh, quartz magnetite biotite uh, dominant. Um, it is overprinted by a phyllic alteration, uh, by phyllic alteration, um, cerocyte pyrite, which extends oh, well over two kilometres in, in once again northwest southeast trend. That seems to be a regional structural trend in the area. So a couple of kilometres in the northwest southeast direction and at least 500 metres in the other direction. It's a very large system. So that's geology and alteration. Now we look at the magnetics. Uh, once again, that's the top of the Briggs tenement, top the northern boundary, and this is the lower boundary, the southern boundary here. I've left the Naranda leases on. Um, the in yellow the sericide alteration, and in red the potassic core. Um, just goes the magnetic sh maps out or shows that the the porphyry system at um, at Briggs is much larger than it's, uh, it was, at least the magnetics is indicating this is RTP that the system is much larger than we see at surface. That's the central porphyry magnetic anomaly, and there's another magnetic anomaly low um, associated with the river's head porphyry to north, and you could argue that there's an embayment down here where the uh, southern porphyry is. VTEM's been flown as well. Um, to, to me, that looks like a, a less conductive core surrounded by more conductive rocks. Um, nice story, looks pretty. Uh, that's the potassic core there. And this is the sericide alteration. Again, um, there are alluvials in these creeks running up here and up here and obviously there and to some extent here. Um, it, whether it's real or not, I'll, we're looking into it. So the footprint as far as the soil geochemistry is concerned, once again, we're at the same map. There's the yellow phyllic alteration, a couple of Ks. Um, the uh, darker green dots, this is soil copper, greater than 2000 ppm copper, that's 0.2%. Um, so anything green and light green and greens over 1000 ppm, um, just shows you how much copper is actually in the soils on surface and, and how anomalous and, and the, the really good correlation between the copper and the, and the phyllic alteration. And this is Molly. Not quite sure what's going on here. There's certainly a, a, a patch of nice patch of molly sitting over the west here, and another patch, another population to the south. We feel that this one to the west is certainly sitting on another centre here. Um, we can map that. We've got some drilling planned in that area. Oh, there's an IP anomaly there as well. Not so sure what this is doing down here.
so just to give you a bit of an idea what the rocks look like um, this is so that drill rig I showed at the at the first slide that that I think was drilling hole three we drill two holes from that site hole three and hole five this this is every 10 meters I've just taken a uh, photo of the or out of the core photos actually of the um, a piece of the core just to give you a bit of an idea what it looks like over the pretty much the whole hole um, and starting at 160 meters and it's roughly every 10 meters I think down from then on um, so the first half a dozen uh, photos there show you the, the what we call the GDP the granodiorite porphyry um, quite large feldspar phenocris um, there's a, there's quite often a, a cerocyte wash through it all, cloudy feldspars, overprinting an earlier biotite alteration or biotite magnetite alteration. Um, the seventh seventh picture there is uh, post-mineral dike. Oh, and, and underneath I've put the um, assays for the two meter interval that that corresponds with. So this GDP is sort of background 0 0.1, 0 0.2 type grade percent copper. Um, some of these mafic dikes are post-mineral, don't have any copper in them at all. Uh, the next four, the next three, you'll see, we, we, what we get in the GDP is, in, in fact, it's, it occurs at the, in the northern porphyry, the central and the southern porphyry in the sort of coreish part or along the margin sometimes. Um, are, are quartz plugs, I guess, is the best way. They're not veins. Well, they don't appear to be veins. Um, uh, quartz plugs, um, tens of meters in diameter type of stuff. Um, um, and with these, we get the highest grade coppers and, and, and hole three, I think we've got 17 and a half meters at over a percent copper in this stuff. And, and, and mainly it's chalcopyrite. Um, and then as the, so this hole was drilled for basically collared in this in the intrusive and drilled towards the west and and ended up drilling out into the sediments on the uh, western side um, we we get um, quite strong alteration in the sediments along the contact um, magnetite a very fine magnetite biotite quartz veining and finely disseminated chalcopyrite and possibly even some bornite and we can get up to half a percent certainly 0.4 percent copper in that contact zone out, extending out sometimes up to 50 meters so that's what the rocks look like in the core just some interesting things on surface um, the top photo in the center just shows you one of these quartz plugs in the central porphyry um, and the bottom right is it just shows you some of the secondary copper that's associated with it. Um, how the two are related, not sure. It, it may be just that the quartz, quartz fractures nicely and provides a nice host. We don't know yet. Um, the left hand photograph is an intriguing photo or intriguing bit of rock. Um, so in the southern porphyry, there's, we have a similar quartz plug in the middle, massive quartz. And if you follow it along strike to the south, you know, 10 to 20 meters type of stuff, you it it grades into this crenulated quartz um, in the in, in the intrusive and there, there's chalcopyrite associated with that as well. Um, we think that's USTs. I'm not sure whether you believe me if I say that some of these things in here look like terminations along here, indicating to the up to the top right hand corner was the the crystals are growing into the mush in that direction. Um, We've got Doug Kerwin looking at it. Hopefully Doug's, Doug's online. Um, but I'll, now that I mentioned Doug, Doug, Doug put a paper out in 20, 2006 at the Southeast European Geological Foundation Conference. Um, you can get it online. It's, 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 it's very interesting and it looks at these, uh, the transition between intrusives and, and hydrothermal systems. And um, the features that we see at, at, um, um, at, at uh, Briggs, uh, and so that's the high silica rock. Uh, we certainly see sheeted quartz veins. We, we get these features, which we think are USTs and, and Marilette cavities reported in the intrusives. Um, according to Doug, all features of the apical zones of felsic intrusion. So we think that the intrusive, intrusive itself, we're, we're looking at the top of it. It's not been eroded off much. Um, and I'll touch on that in a little while a bit more. 
So the Briggs mineralization on the right hand side there, a couple of pieces of core, they're uh, both from the volcanogenic sediments. So one's a finer grain sediment and the lower one, some sort of agglomerate thing. It's got a some coarser of volcanic material in amongst it. Seems to be, a, and so that yellow stuff that you see is chalcopyrite. Um, there seems to be at least two vein types. There's this wider, and it's quite extensive. It, you find it the, the full length over the two kilometers in the, in the Granodira porphyry, that quartz uh, K feldspar um, vein. It tends to have a, a regular margin, um, diffuse margin in places, and it seems to be cross cut by a later, just a quartz chalcopyrite. Um, vein system that that often cuts across it and 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 has the and I think the chalcopyrite's just been introduced up into these older veins, um, and the box plot on the left, all I've done is plotted up the um, drill hole assays for copper versus uh, in, in their um, against their rock types so. What you see in the grey on the right hand side is the box plot for the quartz plugs and as you can see the copper grades on the left hand side it, it, it's you get some good grade in that um, you know it's certainly over or up to an over percent copper and that so that's nice stuff there are higher grade things in the system um, most of the intrusives sit at 0 0.1 0.2 down the bottom here the yellow and the oranges Interestingly, the andesite in the, in the green and the agglomerate in light brown, um, where the intrusive comes in contact with those, we seem to get these higher grades. Um, and thinking at the stage is that perhaps there's iron in the, in the volcanics that's, um, the fluids have reacted with to form pyrite and um, it might be just a geochemical reaction, drop the copper out. So what did, well, what has Canterbury done since 2017? Um, when we when we first looked at it, we focused pretty quickly in on where, lot, where everybody else had a quick look, or well, those that did the drilling anyway in the early days, which was the eastern lobe of the central porphyry. Um, this, this aerial photo shows um, recent mapping um, by Canterbury with the, in yellow, is, it's a fact map, so. In yellow is just the eastern lobe, and you can see some um, in brown that <clears throat> sediments to the south, and a, and a little bit up here to the west. It's open to the north and, and northwest. Um, and so we basically drilled across this thing on 200 meter centers. We drilled five holes, um, and pretty much in copper mineralization, top to bottom. And some of these holes were down well, over 400 meters, type of stuff. And there's a cross section on the right hand side was a compilation looking northwest through there. Uh, the plates are color coded in copper. Um, these brownie or dark shapes, there's one there, one there, one there. These are these quartz plugs that seem to come up in the intrusive or along the margins between different intrusive um, phases. Um, and these, the, this red here, that's the where you're sort of seeing higher grade copper um, occurring on the on the contact. What I've domained up there is the um, in yellow is the granodire at porphyry. So it's basically a sub vertical plug or stock with uh, which mushrooms out a bit towards the top. Surrounding that um, is domain we call mineralized sediment, and that sort of leads into the next one, which was the um, or oh, one of the slides coming up shortly, which is the resource we did earlier this year. It is this slide. Um, the left hand side, <coughs> looking down on the Briggs project area again, um, in, in red is the two plus 2000 ppm copper. So this is the northern porphyry. This is the central porphyry. This is the southern porphyry. And this is this western porphyry with the molly anomaly we think could be a fourth one. In yellow there is the um, um, what we outlined in the inferred resource which we did earlier this year we got 142.8 million tons at 0.29 percent copper um, and the bottom right hand side just shows you the block model and gives you a bit of an idea uh, um, the GDP domain and the 
that forms the bulk of it. And then we've got a skin of uh, uh, mineralized sediment on, on both the southwestern side and the northeastern side. And Dave Cook's um, porphyry model, um, conveniently used for most Southwest Pacific systems. Uh, I mentioned that um, based on Doug's interpretation of these features that the um, um, quartz plugs and, and the USTs um, tend to suggest that the intrusive at least is it um, is not eroded very deeply, if at all. Um, we also think from the, the reason that there's just, there is a small, well, it's not small, it's 100 metres by 100 metres at least in the area is there's a relatively small potassic core exposed in a, what is rather an extensive fillic zone. So we sort of feel that we're sort of in the upper parts of an alteration system. Um, and like I mentioned before, uh, we're not 100% sure that the rocks we're seeing at surface are not just good hosts for the mineralization that's actually bleeding off something um, at depth, which hasn't been discovered yet. So final slide, just um, what, what opportunities we have in the area. Well, I've pretty much covered Briggs. We've certainly got, we've We've drilled five holes in this and, and the yellow outline is the resource outline in this area here. We've certainly got the rest of the system to the northwest and we've got some holes planned up towards the northwest. And we've also got some holes planned down here at um, in that western target, uh, the fourth porphyry and also down here in the southern porphyry. So there's plenty to do uh, on the Briggs system. We also would like to get involved in some vectoring type work to see which way we should be looking, whether it's geophysical or um, mineralogical, uh, chasing this deeper target, uh, causes of porphyry. And then regionally, we've also got the fig tree tenement off to the north and east and, and out to the southeast, the, the Mannersley copper gold porphyry. So we've got plenty to do in the area. And Peter, that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Well, thanks, Mike. That was an excellent talk. Um, just as uh, people are getting their questions in, hopefully, um, I'll uh, kick off with uh, one. Uh, you've mentioned you, you, your alteration is suggesting you're fairly high in the system. Uh, are you seeing any actinolite with magnetite at all, or any bornite or indications of bornite? Uh, actinolite, no. Um, bornite, yes, yes. We see occasionally in the core you'll see a little speck or two what we think is bornite or part of the bornite family anyway. And is that up higher or is, are you seeing that at the, uh, the deeper holes? Uh, it's, it's generally out along the contact with the meta sediments. Oh, okay, so yeah. it's uh, potentially different. Deeper. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Now, Greg. And uh, yeah, so I've got, got a question here from uh, Greg Morrison. Uh, do you have average values for molly and gold in the resource at Briggs? And is there an, an explanation of Mannersley with gold and Briggs without? Okay, so average values for gold at Briggs is zero. Uh, molly, oh, look, I'd have to have a look, but it's, you know, few ppm up to maybe 10 ppm type of thing. Um, and is there an exploration of Mannersley with gold and Briggs? Well, possibly it might be a different age. Um, if Brig turn, Briggs turns out to be uh, more Devonian age and uh, not part of the um, uh, Permo Triassic, um, so that could be an explanation. Um, no, I can't say. Uh, otherwise, yeah, it's. Yeah, I don't know, Greg. Um, this just certainly seems to be a lot of gold shedding out of more. Well, you had a look at it anyway. It seems to be shedding out of the scans. There wasn't much gold in the porphyry that was drilled in those shallow holes that, uh, well, not so shallow holes that Geopico drilled, but there certainly seems to be scan, um, gold associated with the scans around the edges of that, that porphyry. So do you think the uh, Mannersley porphyries might be similar age to those further south down at Colston and... Uh... Mm. 
possibly. They per my trice, can't they? I yeah, my recollection yeah. is yeah. that sounds about right. Yep. Yep. So Briggs could be older. Okay, so um yeah. do you are you aware of any other examples? Well, although uh, although to saying it's older, that, that doesn't mean anything anyway, because um um uh, Mount Morgan was was gold as well. So there's gold in the older stuff as well. Okay, and and uh, the uh, you mentioned that the MS is off to the uh, west. Uh, yes, I don't know much about those other than the geochem that you know and the, the the public domain geochem. So I don't recall seeing any gold in that um, upper upper dawn one. It's it's more a copper sink type system. Okay. Uh, and you mentioned the uh, the, the Molly soils, which uh, gave that anomaly um, off to the what was it, southwest West, of yeah. Um, yeah. Briggs. That was government data, was it? And no, that's um, uh, historical. That's CRA actually. Was that uh, could that be a potential location issue? Do you think, or um, a real uh, uh, unexplained? No, no, I think we've pinned down the locations pretty well. Um, certainly that CRA, some of the earlier Geopico stuff's a little bit harder to pin down because the, um, they used a local grid. Um, but that goes the Geopico and Naranda stuff. Um, but that stuff to the west, that's, that's more recent stuff. That's pretty well local. And, and we, we, we like the idea, it's a separate system. Um, uh, it's 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 copper. It's molly. It's it's got uh, a bit of a mag high. Um, it just looks like a separate um, uh, intrusive system in its own right. And and there is a little bit of an intrusive exposed or mapped on surface, I should say. I haven't had a look at it yet. Okay, um, Greg's uh, come back with yes. a, a comment there that uh, the copper dominant ones are usually permo-triassic. And the uh, gold rich systems Triassic. Okay, well, Mannersley. Yeah, well, Mannersley is at the younger end of that spectrum in the Perma Triassic. If, if you looked at that, um, where I plotted them on that um, uh, space time thing, it was at the upper part of all those intrusives. That's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, we'd. we'd we're dating the intrusives. We're not dating the mineralization, and if you know what I mean. Yeah, because you, you mentioned you're still looking for a bit of uh, Molly to. Uh, yeah, yeah. They may not necessarily. They might be associated, but they may not be the same age. Yeah. Okay. Um, come on, folks. You there must be some questions there. I see there's a few uh, porphyry devotees in, in the uh, attendees list. Um, I'm sure you've got some questions for uh, Mike. Um, in the meantime, uh, another question I've got is uh, my recollection of the work around Colson suggested that there was some post mineral uh, tilting there. Uh, is that are you seeing similar things here at uh, Briggs, or is it all still pretty much vertical? The only it, the only evidence we have to say that it's at least sub vertical is that we punched a couple of holes out into that um, through that western contact, and it suggested that the at least that granodiorite right, porphyry in the central um, porphyry is has a, at least that western contact sub vertical. But yeah, don't really know. There's no evidence to suggest the local sediments there are um, if if they they are tilted, but only you know, 20, less than 20 degrees type of stuff in various directions. So they're not, not steeply um, tilted or anything like that. Okay. Have you um, used any hyperspectral uh, tools or? Have, have no, I... we haven't. We haven't, not, not, not yet anyway. Is that something you'd consider doing and, and helping to um, this alteration? Uh, possibly for the regional, the, the, the surrounding areas, yes. Um, this, this project, the, the reason we liked this project was as it was an advanced project. There was some old drilling and, and it was really just come, look at it, the historical stuff, come up with some targets to drill and get stuck into it. Rio Tinto has, have, have done a lot, had to do a lot of work 
um, on this tenement as well as regionally. So we've got access to that stuff. But our focus in this area up till now has been on Briggs. We haven't done any work. Um, Fig tree was only just the intervening ground was only just granted in, in the last few months. Um, Mannersley we've, came as part of the package as well. And we've done very little work on that one. So it's really been focused on the more advanced project at, at Briggs, which is, you know, at the stage of seeing what's there, drilling. Excellent. Um, got a few questions coming through. Uh, one from Peter Pollard. Mike at Octeddy and OT, the quartz plugs are really zones of intense quartz veining. Could this be the case at Briggs? I know what you mean, Peter. I, we don't see, I mean, quartz veining isn't a big part of the system. Um, there are the odd quartz veins running through it. Um, a lot of them are very early. Um, magmatic type veins, uh, unmineralized. Um, yeah, not sure, Peter. Uh, the, the, there is, there is, um, it's not massive. Um, so, so it's not a, a massive, you know, intense stock work like you see in the middle of, or at the top of Octeti type of thing. Um, it, it's, it's just massive quartz. Sometimes you see in the weathering, it seems to pick out quite nicely some coarse banding but it's just massive quartz in the core, that's for sure. You'll have to come and have a look at it. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like an invitation. Um, question from my company. Have you looked at remaining quartz plug and uh, contact mineralization for developing grade drivers in the system? Uh, we, will, we will do once we get some more um, drill holes into it, Mike. Um, uh, yeah, it was tempting. In fact, I did domain them out. That that was the shapes that you saw on the on the um, uh, the model. But it's we just don't have enough drilling at this stage to be confident to domain out anything more than the the basic geology, which is the the intrusive and and this sort of mineralized envelope around the margins. But down the track, yeah, because this is what's going to drive the grade is is the higher grade bits. Yep, excellent. Um, question from Doug Young. Mike, do you think the pyrite sericide alteration is later? And if so, has it leached minerals from the system? Um, it, it is later. It seems to, the, the sericide wash does seem to overprint the earlier potassic alteration. And yes, it could have leached the copper out of the system. Okay. Um, and do you think that was the collapse of the system? If you, if you subscribe to that model, <laughs> cool, cooling system and the and then the sort of more superficial waters coming down, which, which according to other people can't happen because the salt plume's too dense for that to happen. But um, and as part of the primary alteration, but whichever way you look at it, it, it potentially could have leached any copper. Yes, although we don't sort of see much evidence for leaching. Um, it, but it could have happened, yep. It does happen in porphyry systems. Okay. Uh, we've got a comment from Doug Kerwin. Uh, I, now think ah, the, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> I now think the QV90 zone at Hugo is a magmatic silica cap overprinted by a hydrothermal bornite dominant event. So I'm not sure if that uh, helps with your... Uh, you mentioned that a little bit earlier on, I think. Okay. Oh, all right. Oh. Hopefully that helps. Something to think over uh, over dinner. <laughs> think about over dinner. Well, on that note, we're, we're coming pretty yeah. much close to time. Um, and it looks like we've exhausted all questions. Uh, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank uh, Mike Hersig on, on behalf of the AIG and ALS. Thank you very much, Mike. Thanks, Peter. And uh, thanks very much to all the attendees who uh, took the time out to uh, come and have a listen. And uh, hopefully we'll see you all on um, Thursday week for the uh, RPGOE forum. Thanks very much and good night.